Thank you, Peter. That was beautiful. Good morning, and welcome to Amelia Plantation Chapel on this the Lord's Day. We'd like to welcome everyone this morning to our online service, and we hope and pray that this service of worship will be a blessing in your life of faith in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Uh, today, just a few announcements I would like to make. Uh, we hope that during this time of worshiping online, that uh, you will remember the, the chapel, its ministry, its mission, all that we are seeking to continue to do by sending in your tithes, your offerings, your gifts to the chapel office. You can also give online if you would like to. You can get there by going through our website. Also, we are in the process of doing a very significant uh, updating of all our email addresses in order that we might have more effectively communicate. And so if you have not been receiving emails, please call the chapel office. Also, uh, Kayla Murray's uh, e email address is available online as well at our website. And we hope that you will do so because we like to communicate effectively with our congregation uh, during th this time. Uh, I would like to, on behalf of the Nest uh, Women's Center, I would like to thank everybody who gave generously to that ministry which we support. And if you haven't yet, you can, you can still send a, a gift in. Please make out any checks to the Nest uh, a, a Women's Center. And also, you can give online at their website. And um, today uh, is the day we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper. And so I hope you'll take the time at home, uh, if you haven't done so yet, to uh, prepare bread and juice in order that we might take it together. And you are going to see the people here. I'm not sure how much the camera will pan, but we're going to be taking communion the way that we're going to take communion uh, on into the future. And that is with individual communion uh, packages. And it has both the wafer on the top and then the juice on the bottom. I'm going to demonstrate this uh, one more time and probably more than that, but I hope that uh, you will become accustomed to this for the unseeable future as we try to keep everybody safe and also still participate in the Lord's Supper together. And if you will, just remember to, there's two tabs and the clear tab on the top, you just pull back and there will be a wafer, the wafer representing the body of Christ. You will at the appropriate time, you will consume that. And then you will open up the bottom part, which is the juice. And at the appropriate time, we will uh, participate together in, a, in the drinking, uh, at representing the, the sacrifice and the blood of our risen Lord Jesus Christ. So we will also then take the cup together. This is an effective way. Uh, one that's being used by many congregations across the United States now to uh, participate together in the Lord's Supper. And um, we hope that you will look forward to being back when we can do this together. But um, let us just celebrate with joy today in our own homes and here at the chapel. And let's remember the sacrifice that Christ made for us. And now, my friends, let us worship God.
as we worship this morning, will you join me in singing Spirit of the Living God? Please pray with me. Almighty God, we acknowledge this morning that you are God of all creation. Although sometimes we tend to think of you as meek and easygoing, today we think of you as a bold and wrestling God who calls us and challenges us to wrestle with the sharp realities of this life. Speak to us this morning, Lord. Remind us of the proper Christian attitude toward life and struggle, and give us a sense of your loving and your comforting spirit. And righteous God, hear now our prayer of confession. A broken and contrite heart is something you do not despise, Almighty God. We turn to you for help because the burden of the world's suffering is too heavy for us to bear alone. And so is the burden of our own guilt, for in some ways, known and unknown, we have made our personal contribution to humanity's agony. Cast our sins away and forgive us in Christ's love. Assure us that in partnership with you and all faithful people everywhere, we may work for that which is good and creative, without fear that is crippling. For we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. My friends, in Psalm 103, we read, As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities them who fear him. Indeed, I declare unto you this day, in the name of Jesus Christ, our sins are forgiven. Therefore, we sing. be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Let us.
let us now profess what we say we believe by reading together, reciting together the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Good morning. Today's reading is from the book of Genesis, chapter 32, verses 22 through 31. Jacob wrestles with God. That night, Jacob got up and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed the ford of Jabbok. And after he had sent them across the stream, he sent over all his possessions. So Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him till daybreak. And when the man saw that he could not overpower him, he touched the socket of Jacob's hip so that his hip was wrenched as he wrestled with the man. Then the man said, let me go, for it is daybreak. But Jacob replied, I will not let you go unless you bless me. The man asked him, What is your name? Jacob answered. Then the man said, Your name will no longer be Jacob, but Israel, because you have struggled with God and with humans and have overcome. Jacob said, Please tell me your name. But he replied, Why do you ask my name? And then he blessed him there. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, It is because I saw God face to face, and yet my life was spared. The sun rose above him as he passed Peniel, and he was limping because of his hip. The word of the Lord. up, Lord, I lift it up, Lord, come and quench this thirsting of my soul, bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more, fill my cup, fill it up, and make me whole. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we ask you to receive now our prayers of intercession for those we love and those we know are in need of your mercy today. 
Father, today we pray for Walter Hopkins, Joseph Rue, Suzanne Verserka, Tom Donaldson, Dan and Betty Lee, Lily and David Bowman, Casey Sutton, Jean Bursack, Dorothy Little, Joella Jones, Shirley Hargraves, Mark Brown, Bob Spaeth, Joan Duncan, Chuck and Linda Rimmer, Cotton and Charles Sweat, Gregory George, Kylie Rogers, Violet Thomas, Mary Ann Collins, Rick McMullen, Pamela Chevalier, George Griswold, Ruby Tenbrook, Kevin Vinoy. Father, we lift up to you this Sunday the family of Emily Crawford. God, we remember John and Polly and Winston in their time of loss and grief. Comfort them, O oh God, with the good news of the resurrection. And Father, we continue to remember our nation this day. Be with our nation, God. Be with our leaders and help them to lead according to your will through all that we face this day. Oh God, with grateful hearts, we, we do praise you today for all true and faithful witnesses. God, you have surrounded us with a great cloud of faithful people and signs which tell of your great mercy. For all who speak for you in the face of this world's indifference and ridicule, we thank you. May they continue to reveal your way in the midst of, of confusion and blindness. May they give voice to the true needs of our souls, even when we forget that we are your children. God, we thank you for faithful men and women everywhere, and from all positions in life, who have been sight for our eyes and hearing for our ears. When we have turned from your living word, they have called us to listen. When we have walked in darkness, they have carried the lantern of your truth before us. Almighty God, help us, we pray, to walk in the company of this great cloud of faithful witnesses, that we may run together with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking always to Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith. For it is in his name we pray. Amen. And now, my friends, let us remember the words of Jesus when he said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Let us remember this as we uh, remember the ministries and the missions which God has called us to and which we seek to faithfully support. Let us pray. Almighty God, our offerings are truly signs of our commitment, as well as signs of our unceasing gratitude for the gifts that you bestow. Help us each day to sincerely follow Christ's leading, striving to discover your will and your way through life. For it is in Jesus Christ's name that we pray. Amen. <laughs> Be
be still and know that he is God be still and know that he is holy be still the rest the soul of mine bow before the prince of peace and let the noise and clamor cease be still and know that he is god be still and know that he is faithful consider all that he has done stand in awe and be amazed and know that he will never change be still be still and know that he is god be still and know that he is God be still and know that he is God be still be speechless be still and know that he is God be still and know he is our father come rest your head upon his breast listen to the rhythm of his unfailing heart of love beating for his little ones calling each of us to come be still John, Terry, and Amy, thank you so much. It was beautiful. Please pray with me. Almighty God, by the power of and authority of your Holy Spirit, may your word be proclaimed this day. Father, grant us understanding that we may believe, and faith that we might follow our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. Wrestling. With origins that can be traced back over 15,000 years to cave drawings in France, wrestling is actually one of the, the earliest and most popular sports of human history. Babylonian and Egyptian reliefs depict specific holds that any high schooler or college wrestler could identify. And of course, in ancient Greece, wrestling became prominent in literature and legend, often recounting the, the brutal matches of the ancient Olympic Games. Now, some of us, I'm certain, might have preferred that Jacob and God aired their struggles through, through more civilized conversation and debate. But I believe our text demonstrates, at least uh, metaphorically, a much wiser although be it earthly solution to a, a dilemma that humanity has faced since the dawn of time. Unless we grapple intimately, unless we grapple intimately with who God is for us and who we are in light of this relationship, we will never have a fulfilling nor complete, although it will always be incomplete, understanding of who God is and therefore who we are. 
Now, Jacob, as we know from scriptural witness, was a man who had a tenacious faith in himself and his future, and eventually in his God. He entered the world literally clinging to the heel of Esau, who had the privilege of being the firstborn male of Isaac. But by deception, Jacob wrestled the birthright and the blessing away from Esau. Like so many of us, Jacob went on in life then to depend upon and trust only in his own intellect and shrewdness, rather than on the providence and the the grace, the all-sufficient grace of God. The result being the very real threat of Esau's rage and promised revenge, which forced Jacob to leave his home, to leave his loved ones, and the promised land of, of Cana. This is one of those timeless biblical stories of the reality of human sin, human estrangement, and uncertainty. Indeed, is there a, a, a family or a congregation, or a community that doesn't have a a painful history of of disappointment, of anger, of jealousy, or fear. Who among us has not prayed for ourselves, our church, or our community? The prayer that uh, I think I sometimes pray myself when when I pray, Oh, please, Lord, don't be fair. Don't be fair, I beg of you. Don't give me what I deserve. In your mercy, forgive me. Deliver me. Indeed, a prayer that I hope we will all pray from time to time. Jacob lived in exile from the promised land for more than 20 years before God informs him that he must return to Cana. And I hope we can all imagine the anxiety that this produced. God assures him of his protection. But would Jacob depend upon God's promise? He certainly uh, prayed for it all the while developing his own strategy for uh, appeasing the wrath of Esau. He sent messengers ahead to inform Esau of his impending arrival, but then he, he flipped out to use the vernacular when, when Esau was already marching on his way. In fact, the messengers came back and said, you know, he's already headed this way with 400 men. In his mind, Jacob's mind, it was all over for him. He was toast. And coming somewhat unraveled with this news, he couldn't sleep. He got up in the middle of the night. I've been there. Have you? He sends all of his family and all of his possessions across the river Jabbok toward Esau. So at least they might be spared as a gift to Esau. But Jacob stays behind, and there he wrestles, we read, with a stranger throughout the night. This is without doubt one of the most extraordinary passages of Scripture, a wrestling match that could no longer be Postponed. Dr. Hal Wareheim was one of my seminary professors who passed away just a, a few years ago. He shared with me one night and with a few other students at a dinner party he hosted a parable, a parable which he wrote based upon our text. It begins, And it came to pass that there was a giant in the world who loved to wrestle. A giant who spent every night roaming the world in search of someone to grapple with. This giant had enormous strength and skill and stamina. And when it wrestled, there were no holds barred. Hear the word of God. 
One night, a giant jumped on a human being while it was walking through an alley. It jumped out of the shadows, threw the person to the ground, twisted the person's arm into a hammerlock and grunted, wrestle with me. But the human being was scared. And so it just the giant to please let him up and, and leave him alone. And eventually, the giant released this human being, and he never jumped him again. Hear the word of God. Another night, the giant grabbed a whole gang of people as they were having a wine and cheese party on one of their patios. He put a half Nelson on the hostess, a figure four body ride on the host, and he held the local minister by the ankle as he tried to get away. And the giant demanded, wrestle with me. But after a very brief struggle, the entire party gave up, begging the giant on bended knees to be, to be nice to them. They praised the giant for its strength and its skill and tried to appease the giant with offerings of wine and, and money. Ah, said the giant as he left the scene, I want to grapple, and all you want to do is grovel. Here the word of God. Then one night, the giant, hungry for contact and contest, sprang upon a human being as it sat by a stream fishing. The giant seized the person with a powerful bear hug, rammed its knee into the person's hip, and yelled, wrestle with me. And the human being wrestled with the giant. All night long they wrestled, back and forth, along the riverbank, in and out of the stream, grasping, groaning, straining, sweating, until finally, the dawn began to break. Enough, said the giant. Let me go for now. Not yet, said the human. I want to know who you are, and I want some kind of trophy, a reward for our match. Your reward, said the giant, is that from this night forth, you'll never be the same. And the world will know you differently, as you know the world differently. As for who I am, there's no way to say. But think of me as a friendly foe, for we will wrestle again and again. And again, whoever has ears to hear, let them hear the word of God. As I said, it's one of the most powerful, extraordinary stories in all the Old Testament. Although the identity of Jacob's uh, adversary is not at first made known, by dawn, he realizes that his encounter was with the divine. I say this because he pronounces the place Penuel, which literally means face of God, saying, for I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. Till now, Jacob is all about Jacob, his interests, his plans, his destiny. But the one with whom he can no longer postpone a grappling match loves him too much to let him go. Even though uh, Jacob is the one demanding a blessing and a name, it is God who renames Jacob. And in his renaming offers the blessing, the divine blessing that only God can. For who can change the true identity of a person? but God and God alone. The name Jacob literally means heel, <laughs> trickster, usurper. All qualities that Jacob displayed up until that fateful wrestling match. But now Jacob is to be called Israel, which though thought to be translated often by, by the, the, by the 
the terms, he strives with God. This is how a lot of people translate Israel. He strives with God. It's more appropriately translated, believe it or not, God strives. Or better yet, God rules. God reigns. He rules. Now, if you think about this for a moment, just, just picture the, the significance. This trickster, this heel, this usurper has become the one with whom God strives, and yet God rules. God always rules. This is not only the new identity of Jacob, this is also the identity and the testimony of God about the people God calls his own. God is in a special relationship with his people, Israel, constantly wrestling with them, constantly challenging them and changing them. The people of God will be wounded, yes. They will be exiled, yes. And yet the blessing will remain because God rules his people in the world. My friends, we are also God's people, adopted through our faith in Jesus Christ. And if our scripture today has anything to say to us, I think Dr. Wareheim's parable kind of sums it up. That when the experience is common to every human life, every human being, that is the, the rough and the tumble realities of this life, jump on us. When they jump on us, there's only a few ways that we can respond. We can lay down and whimper. We can give up and grovel. Or we can wrestle for all we're worth until the dawn of a new day. No encounter with life or with God can leave us as it found us. And it often leaves us with a limp, as it did Jacob. You see, we're not a perfect people. We've all attempted, known, lived through, and yet endured the same experiences and more of both Jacob and Esau. And so what can we learn today from our text? Well, one thing is for sure. God is not divorced from the human experience. God is involved. Where there is pain, estrangement, or disobedience, God will call us out. And it's a wrestling match that we cannot postpone forever. God will meet us on some dark night when we are all alone and least expected, and there will be no holds barred. And yet, despite our, our wounds, our limp, our grumbling, deep down, we will give thanks for the privilege, the privilege of wrestling with God, because God will change us. This is why Christ has come. Not to make it easy for us, but to make it real for us. The blessings of life the blessings of, of struggle and faith in Christ. Jesus summons us to grapple with our giants, just as he had to grapple with his own. Because whatever else God may be, God is also a wrestler. A wrestler who more than anything else wants sweaty contact and a spirited struggle with humanity. A relationship that is real. This is why, my friends, we were created. It's a great reform catechism, the Westminster, Sh Westminster Shorter Catechism puts it. The very first question, what is the chief end of man? 
to glorify God and to enjoy God forever. But since the fall of humanity, this will result in us finding ourselves in a wrestling match with God from time to time, grappling with Scripture, with the Spirit of God, grappling with ultimates, struggling to discern what is real, what is meaningful, and what is ultimately of significance in this life. My friends, I pray that you and I will be brave enough to enter that ring and give it our best. Because in reality, you and I don't have a choice. Acknowledge joyfully the reality that you're not going to win in a contest with God, with life, with sin, except for this. If you cling to this giant, to this divine stranger who stalks you by night, if you grab hold of the cross of Jesus Christ and never let go, never let go, he won't change. But you will. So let the contest continue or begin. To the glory of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Friends, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. 
Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. Indeed, this is our Lord's table, and our Savior invites all those who trust and believe in him to come and share in this meal, which he has prepared. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. Eternal God, holy and mighty, it is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise and to worship you in every place where your glory abides. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the angels and with the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna in the God, remembering your mighty and merciful acts, we take this bread and this cup from the gifts that you have given us, and we celebrate with joy the redemption won for us in Jesus Christ. Accept this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving as a living and holy offering of ourselves, that our lives may proclaim the one crucified and risen. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night of his arrest, took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is broken for you. Whenever you do this, remember me. And in the same way, after supper, Jesus took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood. Whenever you drink it, remember me. My my friends, through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor belong to God both now and forevermore. Let us therefore pray as Jesus taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. My friends, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are those who are called to this supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, Lord, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ broken for you and me. My friends, the blood of Jesus Christ has become the cup 
of our salvation. Let us drink of it. Please pray with me. Heavenly Father, God of all compassion, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you reconciled your people unto yourself. Following his example of prayer and teaching, may we obey you with willing hearts and serve one another in holy love. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. 
Our friends, I'd just like to say something simple. It feels like our nation, I, I, it's the suffering of those who have never suffered. Our friends, we, we have not had to grapple with much, it seems. And so people want to grapple with all the wrong things. Our nation needs God desperately, desperately. I think God is calling us to grapple, to grapple with what we see going on in our nation this day, to pray, to pray for both the skills and the ability to show people a better way. You know, we are so blessed as a nation, but I feel in many ways we are threatened to lose those blessings. Therefore, let us grapple. Let us grapple with what we're facing. And let us ask God to come and to intervene, to wrestle with us, to wrestle with those, their hearts and minds that we might have a better idea of the path he calls us to walk. Indeed, we all grapple with many things in this life. Only some of them are ultimately important. Our faith in Jesus Christ. And our will to live faithfully. To his glory. So as we go, may the grace... The peace of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be upon each and every one of us, both now and forevermore. Amen.